to her voice. Now, for the next couple of weeks, I'm continuing to explore women in science, technology, engineering and maths. Now, the other day I read a pretty shocking statistic that 11% of the engineering workforce in the UK are women, which is the lowest of any European country. Now, there's obviously many different ways that this can be rectified, but firstly, if we propel more female engineering role models into the limelight, then perhaps we can go some way to rectifying the situation. Now, it's widely remarked that during the World Wars, women's position in society um, was challenged and gender roles were basically reversed. Now, a lot of historians believe that this is what really led to women getting the right to vote in 1918, rather than the increasingly militant campaigns of the suffragette movement. The similar thing happened in World War II. Every school child is taught about women working in munition factories or as ambulance drivers or the Women's Land Army. But what about those women that didn't just temporarily take over the role of men while they were away fighting? What about the women whose heroic actions actually led to Allies' victory? Well, one of those women is Beatrice Schilling, who I'm going to be focusing on today. Now, Beatrice was born in a sleepy village in Hampshire back in 1909, and it was clear from an early age that she was going to challenge the gender stereotypes of her day. She bought her first motorbike at the age of 14, and in early childhood spent all of her pocket money on Meccano and mechanical tools and glue. Now, buying a motorbike as a female teenager in the 1920s was a pretty unusual move and should have been seen as a prophecy of what Beatrice would accomplish in the future. Now, she graduated from Victoria University in Manchester in 1932 and was one of only two women to graduate in her subject in that year. In fact, it was so unusual for women to graduate at all that her student record card didn't have the option for a female title on it. So, when Beatrice left, she enrolled as an aircraft engineering specialist at the Royal Aircraft Establishment in Farnborough in the 1930s, and it was in this job that she made her most startling um, discovery or invention that directly led to Allies' victory in the Second World War. Now, in the Battle of Britain in 1940, it became obvious very early on that there was really significant faults in the, um, the engineering of the aircraft, such as Spitfires. Now, when these aircraft would go into a steep dive or negative G-force, and the engines would cut out due to a fault in the carburettor and how the fuel was moving. Now, Beatrice came up with an ingenious but really simple solution, which was a small metal disc that could be inserted into the engines of these aircraft and sort of regulate the flow of fuel um, throughout the engine. Now, this was a truly momentous discovery and directly led to the Allies winning World War II. So why hasn't Beatrice led to sort of Alan Turing levels of fame? Well, the only reason I can think of is that she was a woman. Now, she's relatively famous in Hampshire, but beyond that, not much is really known about her, and she's nowhere near as widely known as she should be. So hopefully this will give her a little bit of extra fame and a bit of extra publicity. So next week I'm going to be continuing talking about women in science, but I'm going to move across to the field of medicine, talking about the first British woman to qualify as a surgeon and doctor, the first female mayor and magistrate, and the sister of the leader of the suffragist movement. So that lady is going to be Elizabeth Garrett Anderson. <laughs>